Hello my little beauties, it's David Connolly here, the web developer extraordinaire. What you're looking at here is a video of a guy who was arguably the greatest programmer on the planet Earth. A gentleman by the name of Terry Davis. Now if you haven't heard about Terry Davis, let me give you a very brief summary of his story. He was one of the original programmers for the Commodore 64 back in the 80s. And he was a programming genius. And unfortunately, he suffered from mental Ill illness, you know. And uh, funnily enough, that seems to be a thing that follows our community, unfortunately. But in any event, he used to do these live streams. And in the live streams, he would express various opinions about programming and technology and the internet and all of that stuff, you know. And I have enormous respect for the guy. I mean, programming-wise, he, he was in a different league from anyone watching this video, including me, that's for sure. But he hit upon a few things that I think were home truths, you know? And what you're looking at here is a video of him. Uh, he's working on, I think, his operating system. He built his own operating system. Now in case you're wondering, building an operating system is just about the most difficult thing that you can do with a computer. And it's the reason why there's probably less than 10 credible operating systems on the planet Earth, you know? Well, he built his own operating system. Now as well as making his own operating system, Temple OS, he also made his own programming language, a language that he called Holy C, and apparently it was a cross between BASIC and the C language. And when I'm talking about making his own programming languages and operating systems, I'm not talking about distros, you know, I'm not saying that he did a theme. He was actually a huge critic of Linux, believe it or not, and he built an entirely new operating system from the ground up. And he did everything, even his own programming language, his own drivers, everything. The guy was a genius. He was like the IT version of Bobby Fischer, the chess player, you know? Anyone who's into chess will know what I'm talking about. This is genius, leagues ahead of everyone. But um, unfortunately, wrestling with those inner demons that seem to affect so many people. Anyway, he believed that there was something, now I have to be careful with my words here, I'll use my own words, but he believed that there was something, let's say, special about the Commodore 64, and he believed that ultimately a lot of the modern stuff, now by the way, I should say he was building this uh, up until fairly recently. Unfortunately, you can tell I'm using past tense. We lost him a couple of years ago in an accident. He got hit by a train and um, he, he was homeless in the end. It's a, a tragic ending. But nevertheless, a lot of his videos are still out there and a lot of his thoughts, you know. And he believed that Linux, the operating system, to use his words, was trying to be a 70s mainframe. And he said that his operating system was trying to be a Commodore 64. Now, if you have never had a Commodore 64, or if you have never, I don't know, been hit by that particular lightning bolt, that won't make much sense to you folks. But to some of us, it makes a lot of sense. The Commodore 64 was a magical computer. There are things about that computer that are uh, worthy of a. Pardon me, I can't say that the C. I can't say it. Anyway, there's things about the Commodore that were incredibly special, and maybe I could do an entire video about that. The Commodore is the computer. Oh, it's going to go again that was touched by God. I'm not a religious guy, but there's what I'm saying, you know. Um, maybe I should talk about that some more one day. 
Anyway, this is what a Commodore 64 looks like when you load it up. And this is what the Tron Gate framework looks like. I'm not saying that I'm in the same league as that guy, but I definitely can see where he's coming from. I'm clearly a guy who's influenced by the Commodore 64 myself. In some respects, I suppose I'm doing to web development what he did to programming. And that is, I'm trying to provide something or produce something that's different, a completely different way of thinking, you know? Anyway, um, I'll leave a link to a couple of videos for anyone who wants to find out more about Terry Davis. I'll probably leave a little mention or something in the Trongate documentation as well, so that his place in history is forever secured. And the main thing I wanted to say is that there's no getting away from the fact that the guy was mad, right? But when he was doing his live streams, he used to talk about some of the philosophies of programming and computing and stuff like that. And when you listen to him talking, he's absolutely right. And one of the things that he was talking about, for example, was how he doesn't think you should use third-party libraries, if at all possible. Now, he wasn't a total fundamentalist in this regard, but if possible, you should not use third-party libraries. Now, that makes sense. It makes sense for a whole bunch of reasons. I was talking to someone today and I was saying, that's absolutely right. And they says, well, why not? And I thought, you know, cast your mind back. Let's imagine it's 2005. And you're having a meeting with a guy called Steve Jobs. And you're part of the team developing the iPhone. And imagine your job is to come up with a calendar system for the iPhone, this revolutionary device. And you want people to touch and a calendar's going to pop up. How do you think Steve Jobs would have reacted if you had just put your hand up at the meeting and said, Hey Steve, I think we should just use jQuery because it's got a little pop-up calendar. Look, see, let's just use that in our iPhone. What do you think Steve Jobs would say to that proposition? <laughs> you know, right? He'd say, hit the bricks. And there's a large list of benefits from not using third-party libraries. I'll give you just a few of them. Security. So you're not bringing in someone else's problems. Two, you're no longer beholden to someone else's versioning schedule or their politics or their coding structures or their faults or whatever else. The strange esoteric way of building stuff. You don't have to worry about the licensing agreements. You don't have to actually download loads of junk code because maybe they're depending on some third party stuff. You know how this goes, right? If you build a system that does not use third party libraries, that means that you are in control. And, you know, when it comes to frameworks, my goal with the Trongate framework is to go after Node.js. I'm not going after Laravel or anything like that. My goal is to go after Node.js and I want to get my two primary target demographics, if you must know, are going to be the JavaScript community and also a lot of very disappointed former Codeigniter developers. That's my two main demographics. And when this framework gets launched, I don't want people to go, oh, it's just another framework. There has to be some proposition that we can say in one sentence that makes everybody say, now that's different. They might not agree with it. Maybe they'll think it's crazy, but at least they will accept that this is different. This is the kind of thing I think about constantly. In the case of the Trongate framework, what do you say? It's faster, better benchmarks, more productivity, uh, security, a different ecosystem, it's easy. What do you say? 
Well, none of the above. Because the fact is, all of the frameworks are saying that. And if you launch something, even if it's true, I mean, I will take the Pepsi challenge against any PHP framework on any benchmark known to humanity, including Falcon. I look forward to that. I relish the opportunity. However, I don't think that's what should be our main battle cry. Because everybody's saying that. I think our main battle cry should be, this is the world's first ever V1 forever framework. No more emails in the middle of the night saying you need to update everything. No more release schedules. No more certification that's out of date in six months. No. With this framework, you learn it once and you use it for a lifetime. In the past, such a proposition would have been ridiculous because you would be effectively tethering yourself to these technologies like HTML5 or whatever JavaScript that might become out of date in the future. However, Trongate's architecture is unique. When I built it, I made it in such a way that the entire framework is contained within one folder, a folder called Engine. Not a folder and a vendor autoload or something like that. Not some MVC. No, 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 no. One folder. And when there's an update, you get a notification. Hey man, there's an update. Do you want do you want this update? You can say no, fine. But if you say yes, it just goes okay, and it updates your engine, and that's you. V1 forever, baby. That's what we are aiming for. And what a bold and unique proposition it is. Now I think that the idea of not depending on third-party libraries really fits in with that model. Of course, this leaves a few technical challenges. I'm going to have to build some date and time pickers and things like that. going to have to probably build a front-end framework. Right now it uses W3 CSS. So there's a few challenges that I'd have to uh, deal with. However, I would be quite happy to make those live streams and put them on YouTube, you know, and be some good content, right? How to build a JavaScript calendar or something. That would be a nice bunch of things for the video. So maybe you guys could enjoy that. But the other thing is, it would give the Speed Coding Academy people a wee bit of time to enjoy the fruits of our labour. Speed Coding Academy has been fantastic. I've loved the whole thing and everything. But it took ages. And of course, the planet is going through a, well, a crisis right now. So my vision that we would all be making 10,000 a month, well, I don't think it quite happened. And I apologise. I never saw any of this coming. I did not anticipate that building a framework would take so long and desktop apps and I think there's about 400 videos in Speed Coding Academy. It took ages. But as well as that, I don't think there's much of an economy out there. And I feel bad because I don't feel that people have been given an opportunity. And I'm talking about the people at Speed Coding Academy. I don't feel as if they have been given an opportunity to own the marketplace, you know, to, to be we might as well just say it, the most productive developers on earth, you know. I'd like them to have that opportunity. I'd like them to have, you know, a period of time where they can just dominate the marketplace. I think it would be nice, you know. So, make no mistake, I could launch Trongate tonight. I could do the documentation, finish it over the weekend. And I reckon we could, um, we could put up a good showing whatever the phrase would be. I think we could. There's no technical challenges or anything. It's a solid framework. However, given the fact that it does have one or two third-party libraries, at least when you use the desktop app, and given the fact that the speed coders haven't really had that opportunity that we all hope that they would have, I'm wondering if maybe I should postpone the launch of it. I don't know. Perhaps this is a conversation that we should have on the Speed Coding Academy discussion forum. I don't know. But I'm going to leave 
a poll on my YouTube channel. You can do that. And uh, I hope that you'll vote or leave a comment or just do something and let me know how you feel. I'd love your advice. Uh, it means a lot to me. Thank you very much. Have a good day.